So in the short term, being somewhat overbought, we're going to be looking for a pullback towards the 68.22 area, at which time we're going to use that to get into, into buy positions. Now, again, with the long-term crossover, uh, very fresh like what it is right now, we can see that it's been quite some time since, the, uh, since we've had a crossover. May the 10th was the last time we had a crossover, and that was to the downside. And we can see numerous other times that uh, the predicted medium term, or excuse me, the predicted long term has tried to cross over the trigger, hasn't been able to do it for, you know, essentially since uh, middle of February. So again, with this crossover just taking place, certainly an excellent buying opportunity. Now, going into our Euro-US, certainly one of the more popular pairs in the, in the Forex market. Uh, this one, we have a very, very mixed bag here. So, uh, again, what we have to do is we want to be a little cautious. Now, our predicted true strength indicator is running completely flat. However, it is in heavily oversold territory. Our predicted MACD has already put out the buy signal, and that was the, the, about midweek of this week. Now, predicted medium and long-term differences are starting to come out of negative territory. Our long-term crossover has not taken place. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to go in and, and back it up a little bit to the medium term, see if we can get a signal uh, as to what the next likely direction of Euro-US is. So in the medium term direction, I still can't get a crossover for uh, a bigger move to the upside. Uh, you know, so we have to be cautious of this. Now, short term is crossed over, so we have the short term indicator is crossed over, the predicted MACD is crossed over, but the predicted true strength indicator, which we've seen just by last week alone, how powerful that indicator is, it's not yet willing to put out a completed uh, buy signal on Euro US. So let's go into the daily report, have a look at Euro US from the daily perspective. I don't think we're going to get any uh, violent moves on this pair to start the week. We've got the neural index up for the third day in the row. Our predicted short-term differences have actually turned positive. Our predicted medium and long-term differences are coming down from 79 to 37 and 141 to 98. So in the short term, it's supportive of, for, of a further move higher on Euro US. Now, looking at the close, which I think is very important to do here, we've closed at 121.06. Uh, now, again, closing out the week at 121.06, we've got 120.16, 120.94. So to begin the week, uh, my bias is tipped at the upside, so on a pullback, I'm not sure we're going to get as deep as 120.16, but that's possible. So if we do 120.16, I would recommend as a buy area based on what I'm seeing with the U.S. dollar and the U.S. dollar index weakness. Now again, it's very important that we take a very close look at that U.S. dollar index because Forex primarily is buying and selling U.S. dollars against other currencies, and we don't want to lose sight of that. So uh, again, what we're going to do is just quickly now uh, go back and have a look at the Euro FX futures contracts. We can see that the Euro FX futures are showing a very similar pattern to the Euro US, but the point of interest here is the neural index, or excuse me, the predicted true strength indicator there is absolutely no crossover to the upside. So this is definitely has a downside bias still to me, but that downside bias could be limited if the equities, you know, if the equities gain strength, then Euro US will be supported by that and it will push higher. Now with that said, I'm going to be doing a quick recap on some of the global equities this week. So to, to assist because I know that there's a lot of traders out there that are that are, are trading the euro US so we want to make sure we have a good look at that now another driving factor here in the Forex market is the Japanese yen futures contract so we've got we do have a clean signal to the downside now this suggests when we have a signal like this this suggests yen weakness this supports our US Japan long trade so we can see that our medium and long term differences are turning into the positive uh, our predicted MACD, we still have our crossover to the downside. Predicted true strength indicator, also supportive of further yen weakness. Now, it's very important that we look at all this stuff because, uh, again, breaking a currency down on an individual basis can be uh, extremely, uh, an extremely productive way of doing something. You know, instead of looking at them with the pairs, I tend to look at just about everything. 
Now, with that said, what I'm going to do here, we, that's our main look at the currency markets, and I'm just going to do a very, very quick recap of what's happening with the global equity market. Now, what I've pulled up here so everybody can see, the equities are a driving factor in the foreign exchange market right now. If we have equities moving higher, global equities moving higher, we are going to see a softer U.S. dollar and stronger commodities, specifically crude oil. So let's have a look at all of them. I'm not going to go into a lot of great detail with this, just, just to point out what I'm seeing. So the ASX, the Australia stock markets, in, in the medium term, we have a buy signal. On the CAC 40, again, we have a buy signal forming in the medium term. Predicted MACD, predicted true strength indicator, all supportive of that index moving higher. The DAX 30, the cash markets, again, predicted medium term crossed over to the upside. This is, a, 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 this is, again, a consistent signal that's running through here. Predicted MACD, predicted true strength indicator, both supportive. Uh, predicted medium and long-term differences in the DAX 30, also supportive of, of a move higher. Dow Jones Euro stock 50, again, we've got in the medium term, we have a buy signal forming here. Predicted medium and long-term differences also moving higher. Predicted MACD and the predicted true strength indicator, both supportive of further longs. We have a similar picture here in the U.S. with the Dow Jones Industrial. On the medium term, when this medium term signal, if it can, can complete, then the Dow Jones will likely move higher. The predicted true strength indicator and the predicted MACD also supportive of that move. Going into the FTSE 100, you can see that we're running a consistent picture through here where we're trying to get this buy signal here in the medium term. Predicted MACD and predicted true strength indicator also somewhat supportive. Now we're going into Asia, looking at the Hang Seng. We can see that the medium term crossover on, the, on these equities has just recently taken place. Again, the predicted MACD and the predicted true strength indicator, both supportive. Predicted medium and long term differences now turning positive, suggesting that the Asian equities are also going to move higher. Now, we've already touched base on the S&P 500. We're just looking here at the S&P 500 cash market. Again, we don't quite have that signal, but we're very, very close. So a lot of this analysis looking at the global equity markets, not just one, suggests that the global equities will start to move higher. So this is what we want to keep an eye on to begin the week. And again, when you're trading currencies, equities are a big part of trading currencies right now. So if these equities move higher, then we're going to see that U.S. dollar soften, and then we're going to see your Euro U.S. move higher, pound dollar move higher, U.S. CAD down, and so on. So that's what we're looking at uh, to start the week. Now, we would hope to see uh, the volatility somewhat limited compared to what we've seen over the last few weeks, but that will be uh, left to be seen. So at this time, I want to thank everybody for viewing this. And again, my name is Greg Furman, market analyst here at TraderPlanet.com.